Today I'm going to show you my very favorite fingerings that I use to get really fat notes in the altissimo. So in my last video, we talked about a really easy set of fingerings to use to get up into the altissimo and to play very quick patterns if you want to do scales or things like that. The problem with these notes is they tend to not be very big. And sometimes we just want to sit on a note up there and wail on it. We want to just scream up in the altissimo. So I'm going to show you all the fingerings that I personally use when I'm going up into the altissimo and I want to play a really big fat note. Now I'm also going to show you the fingerings from high E up to high A. And these fingers I didn't show in my last video because they're different from alto and tenor. So let's start with the high E. Now this isn't the palm E, this is the front E. And the way you play that is by playing the front F, which is the key above your B key. And they call it the front F because when you play that, it opens up the F palm key. Now I'm gonna add to that my second and third finger where they normally would go. So here's my front E. Now if I lift up my third finger, I'm gonna get front F. Now the reason I wanna play them on the front is because I, if I wanna play scales, I wanna make it easy on myself and almost all the notes up to high A utilize this front F key. And it's very difficult to go back and forth from the palm keys to the front F. Also playing the front E and front F is a good indicator as to whether your voicing is right to get up into the altissimo range. If you're not playing with a good voicing for that range, it's gonna sound like this. On the E and F. If you do have a good voicing for that range, you'll get both the notes. So that's really crucial that you're able to play the front E and F if you wanna be able to play in the altissimo. So here's the E and F again. And now I can go ahead up chromatically to the F sharp, and I do that by playing the side B flat, or the very lowest side key on the right hand. And there we go, from E, F, F sharp. And I'm staying on the front of the horn, so it's very easy to play. Okay, then from F sharp, I'm gonna go to G. Now there's two fingerings for G. The first fingering is what I call a facility fingering. It's what I use when I wanna play fast. And that's fingered with the front F, the first finger on my right hand, and the side B flat. So there's my high G. But you can tell it's a little bit small. I'll show you the other fingering for G in just a moment, but first I wanna to go to G sharp because if I'm trying to play scales here, this is the G I wanna use, and then the G sharp, we just lift up that first finger, okay? So for the G again, it's front F, one on the right hand, and side B flat and then we lift up the one on the right hand, but we keep the B flat down and we get our high G sharp. Okay, so now let's go over the really beefy fingerings for G and G sharp. And the way we play those is in the left hand, we play one and three, and in the right hand, we play one and three. This is called the split fingering. Now this is not using the front F, this is just using the normal one where your B, B would go. So one, three, one, three, and that sounds like this. And that's a lot bigger than the other G. You can hear a small G, but that small G I wanna use when I'm moving fast, but I don't wanna use the split finger when I'm moving fast. It's too awkward of a motion. So then from that split finger G, if I add the side C in my right hand, that's the middle side key to it, I get the G sharp. So here are the beefy fingerings for G and G sharp using split. And here are the facility fingerings using the front F. You can hear they're a lot smaller. But if I'm moving fast, those are definitely the ones I'm gonna go for. Now, there's only two fingerings that I use for high A. The first is two and three with the octave key on the left hand, and that's it. So no first finger. And it's good A, it just pops really well, and it's fairly in tune for my instrument. Now, it's very common to see people add the, the right hand, one, two, and three fingers. So you would have two, three on the left, one, two, three on the right. And that's a really beefy A, but it's also really sharp. So you have to lip it down. I don't like to use that. And I get a pretty beefy A out of that two and three alone. The other way that I like to play A is one, two, three on the left hand, one, two, three on the right hand with the side C which is again that middle side key on the right hand. And that gives me a really growling A, one that can split up really easy. Uh, I like to think of it as the David Sanborn A. So now moving up from there, 
I tend to play B flat just open because that's a pretty big B flat for me. And then B, I play two different ways. One is by overblowing the palm D. So I'll overblow that to the B. That's a pretty big B for me. I can make it even a little bigger by adding my third finger only with that palm D. It gives a little bit more resonance. It's kind of a nice fingering. And then if I really want to get one that has a lot of beef and, and um, fatness to it, I'll finger it like regular D on the saxophone. So one, two, three on the left, one, two, three on the right octave key, just like I'd play. And I'm just going to lip that up. And that has a lot of stuff going on in the sound. So there's a great way to finger high B. Now, if I really want a fat high C, I'm going to finger this the exact same way I fingered my fat high G, which was the forked or split fingering, meaning one three on the left, one three on the right with my middle fingers up and uh, octave key. So here's the G again for reference. And now I can overblow that up to the C. And then C sharp, I just lift up my right hand and I've just got one and three on the left. So now if I want to get a really fat high D, I just play that with the front F key and octave alone. That's a really fat high D if I just want to scream up there. Now that's kind of where I stop my beefy fingerings. If I need to play higher than that, I just use my palm key facility fingerings and try to get them as big as I can. And I know there's tons of other fingering options for some of the notes that I showed you today that I don't use. So have fun goofing around on the instrument, trying to see what works for you, looking around for fingering charts, looking in Altissimo books. There's a ton of resources out there that I'm sure you can find. These are the ones that I use. They really work well for me. Hopefully that gives you a good start.